Hello, my name is Lizina Rahman, Technical Marketing Engineer for Future Electronics. Today I will walk you through a demonstration of how to use ST Microelectronics' MCU board, Wi Fi shield, and a MEMS shield to collect temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor data and visualize it with an IBM Watson in real time. For the hardware components, we will need one Nucleo F401RE, this is an MCU board, one X Nucleo IDW01M1, which is a Wi Fi shield. And finally, 1X Nucleo IKS01A1, which is a MEMS sensor shield. For the software tools, download links can be found in the description box. We will need the STM32 USB drivers, a terminal emulator program, today we will use TerraTerm, and finally, we will need to set up an account in the IBM Bluemix platform. Before we can get to the hardware portion, I'm going to ask that you have the STM32 Nucleo board software prerequisites completed. Moving on to the next step, we will stack our ST Microelectronics boards on top of each other, like so. Next, we will power on our boards through our PC USB port, and a default drive will be created. Drag and drop the bin file into the Nucleo Drive folder on your machine. There's no need to compile the project in IAR or Kyle. Now we are ready to configure our TerraTerm, or if you're using a different program, please open it now and enter the following configurations. Select Setup, then Serial Port Setup. Set the port to the ST Microelectronics ST-Link Virtual COM port, and set the following parameters. For baud rate, we will enter 460-800, 8-bit for data, none for parity, 1-bit for stop, none for flow control, and click OK. Next, we will select Setup, then Terminal, and select the checkbox labeled Local Echo and CR plus LF box from the Transmit drop-down list under the New Line menu. Press the Reset button or the Black button on your STM32 MCU board. You should see some signs of life displaying on your terminal screen. Should you encounter the following message, please hold the User button or the Blue button for at least 5 seconds. You will be prompted to enter the appropriate Wi-Fi credentials for your corresponding network. Please keep your terminal window open and open a web browser alongside to create your Bluemix account. We will need a Bluemix account to visualize our data. Please log on to www.bluemix.net. Select the Create a Free Account button, create an IBM ID, complete the form and click Submit. Check your email to activate your account. You should have received a confirmation email. Click on the provided hyperlink to complete the registration. Sign in using the username and password you specified during registration. Click Dashboard in the menu. If you are asked to create a space, type Demo. You may choose a different name for your space. Click Create. You will be presented with your dashboard. You may start creating your Bluemix applications. Now that we have our dashboard open, we will select the Catalog button on the top right hand of our page and scroll down to the Boilerplate section and select the Internet of Things Platform Starter app. you will be redirected to a page called Create a Cloud Foundry App. For our app name, let's keep it simple. We'll name it Future ST Demo, and then we'll hit the Create button. The page will redirect itself to the app page, and it takes a good five minutes for the status to change to running. Now we will go back to our dashboard, and we'll observe a few changes. The first thing we'll see is that our Cloud Foundry app has been added to our dashboard, and we can see what its current state is. We can also see that two services have been added, the Cloudant NoSQL DB and the Internet of Things platform service. Select the Internet of Things platform service and you will be redirected to this page. Please select Launch. Now we'll need to add our device to the Watson IoT platform service. While it is not mandatory to enter any of the requested information, it is advised as it will be a useful way to keep track of the different devices created in the future. So if we direct our attention to the whiteboard and flip it over, we will find the serial number listed on the bottom right hand corner. Select Next and finally Create. We have created our device. You will be brought back to this screen. Select Next and create a device ID. You are free to choose your own. I will name mine as Future IoT. Select Next. You may enter your own token or leave it blank and Watson IoT will auto-generate it for you. Select Add. We have successfully added our device to our organization and now we have all the necessary parameters to bridge a connection with our hardware through TerraTerm and visualize it on IBM Watson. Be sure not to lose your device credentials as it contains unique information pertaining to your board. Now let's keep this window on the side and go back to our terminal emulator program. Enter the following parameters when prompted. For your username, enter use-token-auth. For password, enter the authentication token generated by IBM Watson. 
For host name, enter organizationid.messaging.internetofthings.ibmcloud.com. Enter your device type. We had selected ST Micro, then enter your organization ID and device ID. You should see an influx of data pull up on your terminal screen. Please ensure that all information is entered as it is displayed by IBM Watson, and that includes the proper letter cases. Otherwise, you will receive an error. Now, all this information is great, but it would be even better if we could visualize what all these data points mean. In order to do that, we need Node-RED, a programming tool to wire hardware devices, APIs, and online services together. Node-RED is available on the IBM Bluemix platform as one of the boilerplate applications in the catalog. To access our Node-RED JavaScript editor, we need to direct our attention to the IBM Bluemix dashboard. Under Cloud Foundry Apps, select the application hyperlink we created earlier. We will be redirected to the Node-RED page, and you will be asked to create a username and password. Once we have that taken care of, we can go to our editor by selecting this button right here. You will notice our editor has been pre-populated with different nodes. You are welcome to customize your flows to fit your application needs. Our flow requires the use of an aggregator node to aggregate our sensor values over a specific time span. By default, it is not included in the library and we must add it. I will walk you through the steps. We need to go back to our dashboard. From there, we will select the app, not the hyperlink. That will bring you to the Node-RED editor. We will be brought to the Cloud Foundry app overview page. Now scroll to the bottom and select Enable under the Continuous Delivery section. Next, we need to make sure that the Git card is configured. Select the card. Scroll to the bottom of the page and select Create. You will see now that if we go back to the DevOps page, it should say Configured. Let's go back to the Overview page, and now we will select the Eclipse Orion Web IDE card. Our workspace should look like this. Select the file called package.json and add the following line at the end of the dependencies. Do not forget the quotation marks. And lastly, we will select the play button to deploy the app from our workspace. Next, we will need to go into the delivery pipeline card. The page should look like this. Run the build stage by pressing the play button. The bar will turn green once the stage has successfully passed. We will repeat the step for the deploy stage. Let's go back to the Cloud Foundry Apps page. We need to add Google API keys to see the generated data set. From the left-hand side, select Runtime and add the Google API key. To implement all the good work we did, we must restart the app. Under the drop-down list under Routes, select Restart. This may take a few moments. It should turn green and update with the words Running. Go back to the dashboard and select the hyperlink to get back to the Node-RED editor. I'm going to import my flow that was previously created. Success! The aggregator node has been added. Make sure you edit the IBM IoT node to include the API keys and tokens to bridge the connection. To find the API key, Go back to the dashboard, select the app, and from the left-hand side, select Runtime, and add the Google API key. Select the Environment Variables button, and you will observe that two parameters have been added, API key and API token. Take a note of these and enter it into the IBM IoT node. This is the result that we are expecting to see. Now let's switch back to our IBM dashboard and verify that our device is running. To see all the pieces of the puzzle come together, the final step is to open a web browser and in the URL address bar, enter the customized URL we created. It needs to follow the nomenclature of cloudfoundryapp.mybluemix.net slash sensors. So in our example, I name my app Future ST Demo. And therefore staying true to the nomenclature, my URL will be futurestdemo.mybluemix.net slash sensors. With this link, I will be able to visualize what all those fantastic data points in TerraTerm looks like. Two things to note, Google JavaScript APIs were used to create the gauges and the line chart, and it was added into our environment variables page. And lastly, in our example, we have set a temperature threshold of 26 degrees Celsius, and a warning message will be displayed if it is exceeded. Well, this concludes our demonstration for today. If you'd like to learn more, please contact your local Future Electronics representative or visit us at futurelectronics.com.